Oh yeah, now it says live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. Hi, uh, my name is Colin, head of marketing here at Free Right. Uh, I'm going to be the host today for our AMA. I'm joined by Annie, our marketing manager, and by our founder and CEO Adam Lee. Welcome to all. Uh, we're going to do a little icebreaker for ourselves in a moment, but first I'm going to turn the tables around and ask a question to the group. Where are each of you watching from today? And um, uh, of course, we're always adding to our reading list, so we'd love to know the last great book you read. So while you're doing that, uh, I'm going to lay out a few uh, things for today's discussion. Uh, we're primarily focused on alpha. We're going to be covering, we've covered some more general free write topics in our previous AMAs, and we've actually linked that below in the, uh, in, in the video description. Um, today, we've sourced questions from the community to help get us rolling and to work through a handful of topics. And we're also going to be taking questions from the chat. So if you didn't get a question submitted or if you have a follow-up, drop it in the chat. Annie is going to be monitoring and answering as she can and bringing it up to us uh, for discussion. Apologies in advance if we don't get to your questions. Um, we will have time after the AMA uh, to drop in additional questions into the comment section. So um, uh, please watch out for that. Um, Last bit of news, we just can't do customer service uh, or customer support during the video. So if you do have an order or a technical question, um, the best way to get sorted is to email our customer service team. And that email is hello at getfreeright.com. So uh, now I'd like to actually introduce the team on the call today. Uh, first, I'm Colin. Uh, like I said, I lead the marketing effort here. You've probably seen me on some of the previous AMAs, uh, our most recent YouTube videos, or even answering some of the questions online or in Indiegogo uh, backers. So I'm um, grateful to be here, speak with you all today. Um, and I'm joined by Annie, Free Rights Marketing Manager. Uh, outside of Free Write, Annie is a published author in a young adult space. She loves her dog and her Irish husband. Um, and many of her books are steeped in uh, Celtic lore. And then finally, uh, Adam, Freerights uh, founder and CEO. Adam spent his life creating and building things uh, as, a, as a youngster. And in 2014, he uh, prototyped the original Freerights concept and the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, as he's been reminding us this past month, I've been doing this for 10 years. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's our 10 year anniversary. Uh, prior to Freerights, Adam studied mechanical engineering and product design at MIT and worked in various fields, ultimately gravita gravitating towards consumer products. So of course, um, in addition to the three of us, we've got our engineering and operations teams uh, working on new products or answering your questions or getting your orders out the door. So big thanks to uh, the folks not on this call, uh, Heidi, Ed, Stephen, Ethan, and Jim holding everything down for us. So um, I'll stop talking for a moment and I'm gonna ask the team here an icebreaker question that came in from the community. Um, what is one good fiction and one good nonfiction book that you've read recently? Annie, do you want to start us off? Yeah, so I'm one of those people who can't, if you ask me what I've read recently, I, I can't say. So I, I will answer with what I'm reading right now. Um, I, uh, I'm reading Morgan is My Name by Sophie Keach. Um, I'm a sucker for retellings of Arthurian legend. Um, so that's what I'm reading right now. And I did just finish um, a nonfiction book called uh, Africa is Not a Country. Um, that was a really cool one. Um, it just went into, you know, how Africa has been portrayed to the West uh, historically and kind of what's going on in modern Africa and all the the cool mosaic of countries that, that exist there. So that's what I've been reading. Awesome. How about you, Adam? Yeah, I just finished the Elon Musk biography by Walter Isaacson. I've been a big fan of Walter Isaacson and all of his biographies for a long time. This is probably the fourth or fifth one that I've read. Um, yeah, did an excellent job. Loved it. And then I'm, the f I'm reading fiction right now. I'm actually reading a, a Carl, Carl Sagan book, uh, Contact. So thought I would go back and read some classics. Awesome. Uh, for me, um, I have been reading, uh, a fiction this last, uh, couple of weeks and, um, I just finished my, uh, Count of Monte Cristo, um, in a couple of weeks ago. Love that. Fantastic. Um, and I'm book three, I'm into book three of the three body problem and blown away. So I'm uh, really excited for, to finish that up. And then also hoping that the Netflix series is, uh, is good. Okay. Well, um, uh, this is a great intro. Thank you. I'm, I'm not looking at the stream, so I, I can't see, uh, the people who have, uh, uh, answered in any, are there a handful of, 
uh, cities and, and books that have been recommended? Oh yeah, we have people from all over, um, Edmonton, Canada, Oslo, Norway, um, Ohio, a couple of Ohio's, represent the Midwest, <laughs> uh, Japan. Yeah, so we are got people from all over. And some people agree, um, Adam, that Walter Isaacson is a great, uh, great biographer. That's awesome. Okay, well, I'm gonna, uh, hi, Danny. She's gonna still. She's gonna stick around, and she's gonna be in the chats for us. And then we'll uh, kick off the uh, the main portion of this uh, stream. Thank you so much, Annie. See you at the end. Sounds good. Okay, Adam. So, Alpha just dropped, just launched um, in people's hands. Um, I'd love to start with you know how are you feeling now? You know, like what does it mean to get a project? Uh, done, done. In, in the words you used, in you know, in our in our team, um, yeah. Why, why don't we just start there? It's it, all of these electronic projects are big, big, big projects that require a lot of coordination across several engineering disciplines, marketing, in various stages. Whether it's pre-launch, launch, regular sale, um, there's just so many people and efforts that have to go into it that when we finally ship the product, it's, um, yeah, it's a great feeling. And then when people get it in their hands, yeah, it's a bit nerve wracking, a bit exciting, uh, but it's always, yeah, it's an incredible relief. So, um, yeah, just having, seeing all the people post on social media, seeing, um, people's responses. I, I'm afraid to say this, but I actually do read, uh, the discord group. I read the, the Reddit subreddit. So, you know, and, and most of our team does as, you know, Colin, um, so we're getting, we're seeing this feedback all the time in addition to, you know, people writing in and it's just, yeah, it's an incredible experience. I think, um, this is actually one of the first ones that I hadn't gone to China, um, and be like really literally side by side by our factory. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we have great partners and, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, this was an idea, you know, a couple of years ago, and now it's a real thing. So it's an amazing, an amazing experience. Great. Well, talk about what happens next. So Alpha has just arrived in most people's uh, doors over the last week or two. Um, what do they have to look forward to? What are we working on? What are the next steps? What is kind of like the immediate after, uh, you know, uh, after effects of, of the launch on the on the product and the engineering team? The great thing about modern electronics is that we can actually update them over the air. So, you know, all the all of our devices are connected to Wi-Fi. They have over there uh, firmware updates. We've already issued our first update, um, and that's because we had to lock our firmware that goes on the devices several months ago when they were, you know, prior to them being in production. So, in that time, from several months ago to now, we've continued development, fixing bugs, adding features. And so we've already released our first firmware update. Um, we have another one that's that's coming up, which is um, you know again taking more feedback from from people, seeing what's happening in the field. Uh, we can do all the testing we want on the devices in front of us, but it's never enough. And so yeah, once we start distributing thousands of devices across um, the world, we get a lot more feedback and see how see what's happening and see how people you know are finding faults or um, you know seeing things that we missed. So uh, we have another for, um, free firmware update uh coming and um you know look i think the the development won't stop so uh you know this is a first batch of a gen one product we have um thankfully we have like like colin said at the top of this we had 10 years of experience of making these distraction free writing tools so we really know what to look for but uh we're still learning right and um you know i think we're looking at, you know, how people are using the devices, how do they integrate with our other products and and Postbox, and making sure that 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 platform experience is as seamless as possible. And so, those are the things that we're going to, you know, once we get these initial bugs and 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 sort of like make sure that the features that we promised are there, um, those are the things that we're going to continue to work on. So, um, you know, I think we're going to get into this, but I, I know that. Uh, you know, people have been asking all kinds of different questions about, you know, when's this going to happen? When's that going to happen? Or, you know, what about this? Um, and so those are the things that are definitely, you know, we're thinking about and put on and, and are on our roadmap. Um, yeah, I guess I'll leave it there. Yeah. And I'll just, I'll make a, a, a final 
uh, plug for uh, Indiegogo backers. If you're watching and you haven't yet finished your pledge box, I um, encourage you to do that ASAP. We have uh, alpha available for you. Just need to get uh, get your final uh, uh, paperwork uh, in. So um, if you need any help with that, please just write into our uh, hello at uh, getfreeright.com help team. Okay, well, um, let's start with a couple of the questions from the community. Um, the first one is uh, about uh, Alpha and, and how it fits into the lineup. Um, you know, where do you see Alpha fitting into the lineup? What are some of the features that it offers that the other, other models don't? And, you know, how would you, uh, you know, characterize recommending it to, uh, to someone uh, looking for a distraction-free uh, drafting tool? Yeah, I think when we started thinking about the concept for what Alpha would become, I think it one, it started at um, you know price point, trying to get the price point as low as we could. Um, two, thinking about form factor, and three, thinking a little bit about um, what are some people's feedback about the other devices. And so, um, when I think about the reasons that I would pick Alpha over the other products, certainly the the least expensive. Uh, two, it has an LCD screen, so. There are trade-offs with all of these things, as everyone knows. Nothing is free in this world, but um, you know, with the LCD screen, it's faster, which is great. It doesn't look quite as good as e-ink. Um, the contrast is better on e-ink. Uh, however, the LCD that we used is is what they call a reflective LCD, meaning that it uses ambient light, and so um, it does look quite good. And when you have a good amount of light, um, the pixel size is a little bit bigger, but it is fast, and so. Uh, some people don't really mind, you know, they, they prefer that speed over um, sort of that super crisp look of the e-ink and are willing to make that tra that trade-off. And so, and also um, we could make it in the size and shape that we wanted, the LCD screen, um, whereas that's much more challenging with e-ink. So um, we were able to put that all in a package of, I call it a slate, um, you know, many people have uh, connected it with sort of the design of the Alpha Smart um, of 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 your. Um, you know, I think the thing that's great about the Alpha is that it's very portable. It's light. The screen is, is simple. Um, the underpinnings, the the computing platform underneath it, is uh, a different. It's, it's in a totally different class. It's a, it's actually much more lightweight. So while on one hand, it can't do quite as many of the fancy features, um, it does the the basics, the core functionality, the, the actual writing process um, very efficiently, which means that we can have the best battery life out of the whole entire lineup. So it's a, it's a mixture of uh, choices uh, that the writer has to make in terms of what they think is best for them. Um, so Alpha has the best battery life. It has um, it has a mechanical keyboard. It's a low profile mechanical keyboard, but it is a mechanical keyboard. Uh, so that's kind of, it. Kind of slots in between the smart typewriter, which I would consider has the best keyboard, to the traveler, which has the best uh, scissor switch style keyboard, and then this one is kind of in between in terms of preference, because there are people that prefer one or the other. Also, you know, it's not purely one. You know, one is specifically better. So. Um, I think, you know, we wanted to make a full product lineup that can offer this as similar of, as possible distraction-free writing experience um, to a variety of different sort of form factor and price consideration choices. Um, those are, those are some of the factors of, of how these products are differentiated and how I see them. And so, yeah, we have a really full product lineup now. I mean, I think we, we have a product, you know, in the 300s all the way to up to $1,000 for the the smart, the, the Heming Wright, um, which is a special edition and it's, you know, on a whole nother level. But um, I think, you know, for most, what I see now, now that Alpha is out in the world is that um, people have preferences, even though the, the products principally do the same thing, which is kind of neat. Um, every writer has a slightly different preference based on their their writing habits. You know, some people are constantly on the go, and so they'd prefer something a little bit lighter weight. Um, some people, you know, have their specific writing spot, whether it's in their house or somewhere else, and would prefer, you know, full size mechanical keyboard. Um, and so, you know, I think it really just it 
it depends on the, the the writer's preferences on what product works for them best. But the great thing again is, I mean, they're all hundred percent distraction free. They all go back to the same cloud platform. Um, you're going to have a very similar type of writing experience on all, on all the products. Great. Uh, so you brought up AlphaSmart just a, a minute ago. Um, can you talk about, you know, the connection to AlphaSmart and between Alpha and AlphaSmart? Is there one, you know, what, what is it? Um, was that in the design philosophy at all? Yeah, I think when we launched the very first distraction free writing concept in 2014, I think it took about seven seconds for someone to tell us about the Alpha Smart. And so we've known about the Alpha Smart for a very long time. We have Alpha Smarts. I've played with them. They're great. I mean, we've heard from writers all over the place. Like these, these, these went from educational tools that were used in schools to um, now coveted. Uh, uh, you know, electron like vintage electronics uh, for writers. And while they weren't ever really designed for long form writing by professional writers, I understand why. I mean, I think we all understand why people have have really liked them. And I think, you know, Alpha El they stopped making Alpha Smart. I think actually in 2015, like the year after we launched that first concept, um, which was just kind of funny timing. Yeah, I mean, we, we've we've been inspired by the fact that writers want to hold, you know, have been holding on to these alpha smarts. And we've also heard from a lot of writers that, and schools especially, uh, that these products are, yeah, you can buy them on the used market, but they're becoming, um, you know, they're, they're, they're not as functional as they used to be, right? And, um, you know, there's becoming less and less in circulation. And so, Schools, especially since they can't really buy used products, they were asking like, well, how can I get something similar? Um, or how can I like, I want to replace my old Alpha Smart fleet um, with something else. And so, you know, again, I think we were inspired by what Alpha Smart did and what it, what it brought to the writing community um, in the process of sort of, you know, going through seven years of uh, developing the Smart Typewriter and the Traveler, really learning a lot about, um, what the Alpha Smart was, and and also getting getting to know uh, the Alpha Smart founders, which is pretty awesome, and and even like you know getting their blessing, even though I don't know if we needed it, but it was such an incredible experience to to talk to Katon and Joe, and um, they couldn't have been more supportive. And so, you know, I think again, I think you know we're trying to really just offer something that like is our version of you know a free write version of this like Slate style uh, distraction free writing tool that fits within our um, value system of offering a real tool for, for writers. Um, so in one, on one sense, yeah, we're certainly inspired by, you know, the original alpha smart Neos and, um, but we, we have our own thing. Right. And so, I mean, that was really important. We had to, we had to take some time to figure that out. And uh, yeah, I think I'm super proud of what we made. I think those guys are super proud of like what we, what we, what we put out there um, using the alpha name. And so, uh, you know, I think, attempting to kind of like just build on that legacy. Great. Well, let's talk about a little bit about uh, design, uh, design features, uh, alpha process. Um, there were a handful of comments along uh, this line. And that was, um, uh, you know, we, we made a point during our campaign to say that we've chosen a different hardware architecture from Smart Typewriter and Traveler to the alpha. Can you talk a little bit more about what that means? and? And how that played a role in some of the features that were able to be included or or, or not um, in, in in alpha. Yeah, so this goes back to um, some of the considerations that you, we made as you know in designing the product. The we love e ink. That's what's the foundation of our smart typewriter and our traveler line. Um, part of making an e ink product is that you're in an e ink ecosystem. Uh, when when we decided we were going to step out of that ecosystem for alpha, uh, it really opened up a lot of opportunity to, to think about, well, what are some of the other options in terms of like actually running this, this platform. And so what we chose for the alpha platform is a much, um, a much more efficient, lower power processor, um, inside the device. And so that's all we need to to run a simple LCD and to do the, the 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 you know the text management, text rendering, and all that kind of stuff that we're that we're running on the device. Um, it's created challenges in other ways about 
languages and fonts and stuff like that, which we can touch on. But um, yeah, fundamentally, we were just able, instead of using a very heavy, and this is, you know, using some technical language here, but like, you know, instead of using a really heavy OS, like embedded Linux, we were able to drop down to a microcontroller processor, a microcontroller platform um, that is just much lighter weight, much more energy efficient, and uh, is generally much simpler. Um, again, so there's, there's trade-offs to these things. I mean, in, in one way, we sort of had to start from scratch because people weren't building these types of applications or these types of app, yeah, these types of applications on, on this uh, processor platform. Um, however, we had to, you know, really customize it exactly how we want. Uh, and, you know, we're, we, we, so far we've done a really good job of sort of like getting the feeling that we wanted from a writing tool, even though, you know, none of these things were designed to, to, to make writing tools. Um, yeah, I think yeah. did that, did that answer the question. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that was really the question is, you know, um, why did we choose to go between, uh, you know, more of an embedded Linux processor before and now into a, you know, microcontroller environment? Um, let me, yeah, let me just elaborate that on really yeah. quickly. I get we could have picked the same thing. I mean, we could have actually. Um, it would have made the product uh, on the same platform, which is great, but the cost of the materials cost would have been similar to our other products because that's part of that part of that processing platform is a big chunk of the 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 bill of materials cost. Um, and so we just didn't feel like it made sense. And you know, given all of the learnings that we've had about like what do we actually need um, from an application standpoint and a, a OS standpoint, um, we could really get down to the basics of functionality. And again, I think we've done it. So uh, yeah, it's there's there's a challenge now. We have two platforms. Um, however, we I think we have sort of the right platform for each product line. Great. Uh, thanks for that. So there are a handful of uh, feature questions that came in. Um, I wanted to highlight one. Uh, uh, the first one, actually, just um, I noticed that the font changed after the first uh, firmware update. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so this is this is about one of those challenges. So the first firmware we were using sort of, I'll call it a stock font choice um, that was built into this microcontroller platform. Uh, problem was, and, and this is typical, is that once we started trying to build out some of the extended character sets, even just trying to support um, international English keyboard layout. Um, so these are including letters, um, you know, with diacritics or umlauts or uh, circumflexes, all those, you know, little uh, symbols on top of the letters or things like, um, you know, a Euro symbol or, you know, any of these other characters that are outside of the, the most basic, you know, A through Z, lowercase and uppercase. Uh, they were missing from the font, the sort of like the built-in font. And so we either had to create all of those characters from scratch um, in three different sizes and write, you know, draw them as bitmaps. And I'm going to the technical thing because this is what this is the answer, but um, or we basically found another font that would work for us that had those characters. And so um I think of this as sort of uh yeah, I mean, we so we we did that. So we we basically went to a whole new sort of font so that we could support international English. That's the that's the answer. Um, what I will add to that is that we still have some room to go in terms of getting the getting the text to look as good as it possibly can on the display. And so you know that's one of the things that we're going to keep working on. Um, and. Uh, one of the things that is going to be in the next firmware update um, is going to be the addition of the international English keyboard layout. That's just going to be the default layout. So that's going to open up alpha to people writing in many other languages that require those diacritics and those different characters. And so that that's going to be good because we couldn't do that with the original font. Um, but like I said, this is still an area that we're going to keep working on and, and improving. Great. There were also a handful of questions around uh, screen contrast. Um, what are some of the best tips for getting the best legibility in the screen? Um, you know, how 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 should uh, consumers be thinking about that LCD and the and the contrast screen? Yeah, so I think that um, 
couple things. So as I mentioned before, it's what we call a reflective display, which means that it actually gets better with more external light. And so, yeah, if you can, if you can get an external light, whether it's your room light or, um, you know, having some, uh, you know, sunlight coming through the window or whatever it is, that's going to make it, you know, the contrast be as good as it could possibly be. Um, the other thing is it has the kickstand, right? So we, we built in this kickstand to support, you know, pushing up the, the angle of the whole device that's going to help with, um, the, the, the reflection and the refraction of the display so that you can see it as best as possibly can. Um, uh, but I, yeah, I think that the biggest thing is just, um, just trying to be in a regular, relatively well lit room when you're using it, um, try it on your lap. Uh, some people have commented on the on the size of Alpha. One of the things that we wanted to make it work for is for people that are writing on their lap. Uh, we we've we heard this over and over and over again in talking to people. And so put the kickstand in, write on your lap. You put it on a desk, take the kickstand out, and you you got kind of the best of both worlds there. Another question. Um, I noticed that if I leave Alpha for some time, it can lag when I start to type again. Um, do you know what's going on there? Yeah, so this is this is I think one of those um, things that we noticed uh, coming out of uh, the you know getting some customer feedback. What's happening is that the device is saving um, constantly in the background, and so it's on a relatively short time. Um, and I think we've done some digging on this, and I think um, one we're definitely going to improve this, and we already have some some experiments in 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 place. Um, because we, you know, again, the typing and writing performance is the most important thing on these products. And so anytime anything is getting in the way of your flow uh, or writing, that's where we're going to, that's where we are going to spend our time in trying to improve that. And so, yeah, that's, you know, acknowledge that in the, in the initial firmware, there's some improvements to be made there. That's something that we're actively working on right now. Yeah. Great. And uh, does Alpha have multiple folders like a Smart Typewriter Traveler, or is it a single folder device? And uh, you know, what is what was that tr trade off uh, um, for the for, for Alpha? Yeah, Alpha just goes to one folder, and um, you can set which folder you want actually in Postbox under the device settings. Um, I think by default it's in folder A, but you actually can choose that. Um, you know, I think again when we were thinking about alpha from a product stand standpoint, we were just thinking like, what is the core functionality? What is the absolute critical minimum uh, uh, that people need? And um, you know, I think even the the folders are a nice to have, but they're not critical for you to get your words out right. And um, in addition, we are we've added a lot more sort of like management and organizing features to Postbox along the way and are going to continue. And so it just felt like a less necessary thing to sort of add in terms of complication on the device. Um, so yeah, that's, it's, it's one folder for alpha. Yeah. And then the, the other thing I'll just add is that um, you can create as many drafts in that folder as you'd like. There is no limit to the amount of um, drafts that can go into that, uh, into alpha on your device and into that folder. Correct. Yeah. So, you know, this is something that um, sometimes, I don't know, it gets, people think that you, you can only have one draft at a time. And so, no, that's not the case. Um, all of our devices work in a similar way in that if you press the new and the new key, um, sort of in the same places that you'd expect a control key on a Windows keyboard, uh, that makes a new draft in that current folder. And so Alpha only has one folder, but you can just keep making new drafts as many as you'd like. Um, and then and uh, yeah, same with our other products. So you can make his basically infinite drafts um, within a folder. Will Alpha have a password or lock capability? Yep, and that's um, one of the things that didn't make it into the the original firmware that we're working on. And so that'll be um, almost certainly in the next uh, firmware update that's going out very soon. Okay, great. Um, another question. I really need to uh, <laughs> I really need to keep track of word count. Um, but unlike Smart Typer and Traveler Alpha, does Alpha not provide a word count? It does. So we have this concept that uh, we call the heads up display. Um, if you hold the space bar down, it will give you some of the writing stats. Uh, word count is the first thing that shows up. So you can 
Um, anytime that you're writing, you can hold down the space bar and it'll show you the, the heads up display, which includes the word count. Uh, it also shows, I think, what Wi-Fi uh, network you're connected to, when the last time the draft synced, a um, couple other things. So, And you can also do that on, on our other devices and uh, let go of the space bar and it goes away and you can start typing again. Excellent. Uh, what is the Alt-GR button for? Great question. So <laughs> we have people writing in because it doesn't do anything, but it does actually. It it It's required in um, basically all the other keyboard layouts that are not English. Uh, and so that's why it's on the keyboard. Uh, once we enable the, uh, once once the firmware gets um, sent down to your device, to your device that has the English international keyboard on it, uh, you'll be able to hold Alt-GR and access sort of another layer on the keyboard. So these, this is a way that you'll, you'll be able to access some of these uh, symbols and letters with um, letter letters with diacritics. Excellent. Okay. Um, now a couple of usage questions. Um, what are some of the ways that you've seen Alpha being used already? Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, we're seeing people use Alpha for all different kinds of things. Um, I've always been. I mean. Journaling, I think these Alpha and our other products are such perfect journaling tools, and so I love to to think that um, people are, you know, they're comfortable leaving a non traditional screen device, meaning like not a computer, not a phone, in their room, in their bedroom, you know, first thing in the morning, writing some words on Alpha. Um, I love to see that. The uh, you know I think we're going to start seeing people probably using them in schools. We've already gotten set, many inquiries about that. We've sold other free write products into schools, um, but I've always kind of felt like yeah these are these weren't really designed for schools. I think you know it's they're they're great products, but um, you know I think those customers have had to figure out how to use them properly. I think Alpha is going to be a perfect uh, product for schools, and we've heard from educators all over the place that um, they need something else than a Chromebook or something or an iPad, right? I mean, they ha kids have just as many, you know, distraction problems as we do, whether they're, you know, these platforms are locked down or not. And so <clears throat> I'm excited to see sort of, I'm ex I'm, I am, I'm, I'm really excited to see how people start using alpha um, out in the world. Awesome. A um, couple questions about future development. Uh, well, actually, lots of questions. <laughs> uh, people asking for a peek into the uh, you know to the future here. Um, you know, what can you tell us about uh, new future free write product plans between devices or software, um, special editions, uh, anything along those lines? Yeah, I think uh, we're uh, reticent to to give a, a timeline. I mean, we have a very active product development schedule. And um, you know that includes new features, that includes new products, that includes um, you know new software stuff. Uh, I can't say because then people are going to expect it, and then they're going to yell at me when I don't deliver on time or something. I'm not sure, uh, but you know, I, yeah. What what I can it's say is, yell, yell at you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, everyone <laughs> yells at me. Um, what I can say is that um, we are working on all those things. I mean, again, I mean, we do whether we're actively commenting or not. Our company is looking at um, the feedback that we receive, you know, on social media, on, um, you know, in the forums, in the in the owners groups, uh, in our own help desk, our own help desk uh, email. So, you know, I think, um, yeah, look, like my goal as uh, this company's, you know, leader and 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 person that like wants to continue building on this this brand and this platform is to continue to delivering a lot of value to, to all of you and, and our customers. And so, um, that's what, that's what we're here for. Uh, can you talk about, um, alpha and its compatibility with free right plus now and, uh, in the future? Yeah, we didn't want to do that right away just because, um, it was, it was just a big, you know, just delivering on the core writing experience for, from Alpha was going to be a big enough challenge. Um, I think we've done that. I think yes, we're we're fixing some of those initial bugs and uh, you know working on some of the you know couple remaining features that we had talked about at the beginning. But um, yeah, at this very moment, uh, which is you know February twenty twenty four, Alpha is not um, uh, is you know not really compatible with Free Red Plus. However. Um, we definitely want it to be. Uh, again, like I think of our product line as a platform. I mean, we have 
we have this cloud platform called Postbox. We have our devices. Uh, we want people to be able to get the most value out of the platform, not just any individual product. And so uh, we're certainly hoping to make uh, Plus um, work with Alpha in the future. Great. And then um, you know, a couple questions about editing. Um, you know, from philosophy of editing to editing on the device to any future editing capabilities. Um, those, those are three distinct questions, but maybe, you know, just take uh, take a minute to talk about how you view editing on the device and um, what, uh, you know, what recommendations we have for uh, people to, uh, uh, who are ready to edit when they're uh, finished with their work. Yeah, I think this is really important. Freerite is a writing productivity company, writing productivity brand. We care about writing productivity. And what productivity means to us is trying to get as many words out as possible. And so we we made a decision very early on that we believe in this process. Um, and we, we didn't invent this process, uh, but we believe in this process where it's most efficient to separately focus on drafting and then editing. And so, so far, all of our products are squarely focused on this drafting experience. And yeah, there's some minor editing that can be done on our products. Uh, you know, there is a backspace. Um, you can move the cursor now, but it's very purposefully designed. All, all of the product experience is designed to try and help the writer moving forward because that's really where we think these tools are most effective. And I, and I think, you know, we've seen, I, there was a great customer review recently that that someone just posted and it was like, what is this sorcery? Like, <laughs> how, how am I writing more than I ever thought I could? And it is because of that square, like that, that specific focus on writing productivity. And so um, all the products share the same philosophy um, and that philosophy guides virtually all of our product decisions. And so, yes, you can um, do the same type of editing on all the product pro products. Um, there is, you can move the cursor around, although it's slightly inconvenient and that's purposeful um, because we don't want it to be like sort of a tier one function. We want it to be something that's like, you only, you, you only use if you really feel like burdened uh, by this, uh, you know, specific typo or something where you have to go back and like make this right note. Um, but for most people, they sort of either don't even know that it exists or they just kind of, because it's like, it's a keyboard shortcut and not a specific key, um, they just move on. And that, that was the whole point. point. Um, so yeah, there's very limited ed editing capabilities. The purpose of the products are try and keep the writing mo writer moving forward with the hopes that the more words that you get out, um, the more efficient your process is, that you can then separately do the editing thing. Excellent, thanks. Um, okay, just a handful of miscellaneous questions. Uh, are your UK prices inclusive of, of tax? And maybe talk touch about like our international, uh, new international uh, sales. Uh, I'm sc I'm scared to answer that <laughs> because we, <laughs> we we recently changed our website. Uh, hopefully, you all have seen it. We have this beautiful brand new website. Colin and I both uh, worked very hard on this, along with a incredible uh, creative team. Um, we have a brand new website. You can spin around the products. You can you know look into them even. Um, in theory, yes, it should show taxes included. Uh, but I would say make sure you read the checkout because things are wonky. I don't know what to say. Um, they're supposed uh, yeah, to. That's I mean, the answer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're supposed to. And, and this new service that we're using is, is uh, inclusive of the price you'll see, you know, with including VAT taxes and shipping to your country. Yeah. I guess the one last thing I'll say is it should be very clearly marked when you check out, right? So it should say, you know, VAT inclusive pricing, or it should say like, you know, have a line item for actual VAT so that you can cl clearly see if those charges are being applied to your account. Uh, do you have any recommendations uh, to make the keyboard quieter if you'd like? Earplugs? <laughs> uh, you know, there's been some talk. I know this has come up recently about um, like keyboard dampeners. Uh, 
I'm personally not a big fan of them. I think it's people can try them. So what, what this is, is like a small O-ring that goes around the stem of the keycap. And so when you press the keycap down, um, it hits the O-ring before it hits the, 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 the keycap itself. And so some people like them. Um, I personally think that they don't add much value. Uh, they're very cheap. So you, you know, you're welcome to try them yourself. I think there's, there's kits on Amazon. Um, we have 61 keys on our alpha keyboard. So you need 61 O-rings. Um, although actually you need less cause you really only are typing on the, the, the letter keys, but, um, yeah, I'd say you can try them. Um, you know, I think uh, part of the typing experience with the mechanical keyboard is some sound. Um, they were not; these keyboards were not designed to be uh, ultra quiet or silent. Um, some people find it meditative. So, unfortunately, uh, if you're extremely sensitive to that sound, uh, you may have limited options. Sure. So are alpha keycaps removable, interchangeable? Yep. Yep. So they use uh, uh, what they call like a Cherry MX uh, style stem, which is the interface between the keycap and the, the switch. You can use, uh, I don't think I have one handy, but uh, there are keycap removal tools, which are basically like two bent wires that go around the keycap and you can pull them off. Um, I would check to make sure that, you know, if you buy a, a third party keycap set, not they all of them will fit on the stem but not all of them are going to work with our specific low profile switch um which is a little annoying but um it's hard to create a keycap that works on every single possible switch including this low profile switch so uh i can't we can, we as in our company cannot guarantee that a third party keycap is going to work perfectly with alpha um I think people are already trying some and had having some good success, which is great. Um, but yes, they can be removed. Uh, doesn't damage anything. You can, yeah. Okay. Great. Um, final question we got. Um, I wonder about your feelings about using the new alpha for freestyle poetry writing. Do it. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, I think, you know, alpha is a, alpha is a, a clean slate. Uh, for writing, you can, um, you know, I think it does have a, uh, the, the screen and all of the products are designed to not really have anyone focus on formatting. I think one of the beauty beauties of poetry is it's not necessarily uh, format based. Um, and so I think you can, yeah, I mean, look, it's a, it's, it turns it on, it, press the button, turns on right away. You can type on it, get all your thoughts down. Um, I think anytime that you to free write alpha is gonna work for you awesome great well uh awesome that's a wrap for today um i'll finish with just a little housekeeping um annie's been keeping me updated in chat she said there's been a handful of customer support questions uh, that have come in today so if you wrote in about an issue or a problem or um, an order question with your device um, please contact our help desk that email is at hello at getfreewrite.com we'll get you sorted there absolutely um, and finally, uh, extend my gratitude to a handful of folks. I mean, first to you, the community. I'm grateful for being a part of this brand, for your questions, for watching. We're so appreciative of you. Um, second, Adam, thanks for sitting down and for this grilling. Uh, and then Annie, thanks so much for uh, recruiting the questions, managing this chat, and supporting the stream. Um, uh, you know, really, really happy and glad you're here. And then, of course, to our extended team, uh, you know, either watching or uh, helping out uh, behind the scenes. You're so, uh, you know, so fortunate to work with you all. So um, with that, we'll sign off um, and get to any comments uh, later in the, in the, in the uh, YouTube commentary. But uh, have a fantastic week, everyone. Thanks, y'all.